Let's start. Uh, in the previous lecture, we finished this example and you get here a conditional probability. For the conditional probability, we say, let A and B be events. Here we have A and B, which are two events. And assume that probability B is greater than zero. Probability B must be greater than zero. We say the conditional probability of A given B, of A given B is equal to, here yeah, it's written like this, probability of A given B equals probability A intersection B dividing by probability B. So here we should first find the intersection of both events, then we find the probability, I mean the probability of A intersection B, then we divide by probability of B. Here yeah, we have given, we have two events, A and B. We find the intersection of <clears throat> A and B, then we find the probability of intersection A and B and also probability of B. Here, yeah, this is the definition of conditional probability. We say the conditional probability of an event A in relationship to an event B. Here, yeah, there's a relationship between A and B. Is the probability that Event A occurs given that event B has already occur, uh, occurred. That means here, event B has already occurred. And then we have event A. We say the notation conditional probability P of A given B, probability of A given B, answers as the probability of event A given B. Here we have an example. Uh, it says, <clears throat> suppose that we roll two fair dice. What's the probability of getting sum of 10? Here, we have only one event, getting sum of 10. That means here, we roll two dice. Uh, what's the probability that we get the sum of 10 for both rolling, okay? Here, for getting sum of 10, here we have six and four. That's 10, five and five, four and six. We only have these three events, okay? We only have these three <clears throat> members in the sample space, which is the sum is 10. So what's the sample space members? How many members do we have in the sample space? We have 36 sample, uh, elements. As you see, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, up to here, there's 36 uh, elements. That means the total of events is 36. And the events that the sum is 10 is three. So the probability of getting 10, the sum is 10, is three over 36. It's three over 36. Here we have only three elements in the sample space, which is the sum is 10. So it's three dividing by the member, uh, the number of elements in the sample space. We have 36 elements in the sample space dividing by 36. We divide both sides by three. Here we get one and we get 12. It's one over 12. So the probability of sum is 10 equals one over 12. That's it. As for only if, if we have only one event. Now we talk about some examples for <clears throat> conditional probability. It says, refer to the previous example. What's the probability of getting sum of 10? Given that, as you see here, yeah, it says, given that at least one die is five. One die is five. Yeah? We have two events. One of them is the sum is 10, and the other one is we have at least one five. Let's return to the sample space. We have two events, A and B. We let A, we let A denote the event of getting sum of 10. So how many members do we have here with sum of 10? We have only three, is it? We have only three. Sorry, the other one. It's like this. We have only three members in the sample space with sum of 10. That means 
for this one is only four and six, five and five, and six and four. Okay. And we let P denote the event at least one die is five. Yeah. In the sample space, we are going to pick all of the all of those elements with there's at least one five. Look, this one. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Do we have any other? We have no others. As you see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That means here we have eleven elements in the sample space. Well, there's at least one five, one dice five. Now we say the probability, probability of A given B equals probability of A intersection B dividing by probability of B. And here we should find probability of A intersection B and also probability of B. Let's find them both. First, we should find A intersection B. This is A, this is event A. And event B are these elements <coughs> which I mentioned. So what's the intersection between this and these elements? Let me use another color. This is event A. The red one is event A and the blue one is, is event B. The intersection of events A and B is only one element. It's only five and five. That's it. We have only one intersection member of events A and B, of events A and B. That means P, sorry, A intersection B. Let me write down here. We say, we say A, Three elements. B, 11 elements. And A intersection B, one element. Here, we must find probability of A intersection B and also probability B. How to find the probability of A intersection B and probability B? We say probability of each of them is the number of elements of each dividing by the total number of elements in the sample space. We have 36 elements in the sample space because it's rolling two dots. Here, we have 36 members in this sample space. This is the sample space. This all is the sample space. Probability Jumari member can you hold the Dabashi Koi Halataka? So, how of Miss Yushash? So, here we say probability of we, we need to find probability of B is 11 over 36, and probability of A intersection B is 1 over 36. Is it now we say probability of. <clears throat> probability of a, in, a given B is probability A intersection B dividing by probability of B. Here, it's written here. This is the rule. We apply this rule. This is for conditional probability. It says, yeah, probability A given B is probability A intersection B. Let me clean this one. It's not, it's intersection. This is intersection. That's probability of A intersection B dividing by probability of B. Probability of A intersection B is one over 36. Dividing by probability of B is 11 over 36. We divide B, so we get one over 11. This is the probability of A given B, which means the probability of getting sum of 10 Given that at least one of them is 
pi. One of the die is pi. We have another example. It says, suppose that we roll two dice. Yes, yeah, so the sample space here is also 36. Find the probability of getting <clears throat> a, sum, the, a sum of seven. A sum of seven. In rolling two dice, how many elements do you have with the sum of seven? Look, we have three, four, four, three. One six, six one, two five, five. You only have these six elements. I have them down. Four and three, three and four. One six, six one, two five, five two. We have only these six elements, which is the sum of seven. Find the probability that. Uh, getting the sum of seven, given that the digit in the first dice is greater than the second one. It's greater than the second one. Let's return to the sample space. As you see here, which elements here, the first one, the first dice is greater than the second one. Look, we say two and one. The first one is greater than the second. Three and one, four and one. Look, these all, the first element is greater than the second one. Five, one, six, one, three, two, four, three, five, three, five, two, four, two. These all are greater than. We have only these elements. So it's 15 elements. That means we have 15 elements in the sample space such that the first element, the first die is greater than the second one. Yeah, we say, let the, uh, the sample space, it's 36 elements. We have 36 elements in the sample space because in rolling two dice, each dice is from one to six, six times six is 36 as I show you in the above one, in the above slide. Here, we, we let A, we have two events, okay? Here's conditional probability. It says, find the probability that getting sum of seven, given that the digit in the first dice is greater than the second, the second one. <clears throat> we let A to be the event that the sum of digits of the two dice is seven. So A is here. How many elements do you have for the for the event A? We have only six. Sorry, the sum of seven is six. Is it? Here we have these six elements in the sample space such that the sum is seven. That's it. And also we let B be the event. The digit in the first dice is greater than in the second one. These are the elements which I mentioned above on the sample space. That's 15. We have 15 elements. And here we have six elements. Okay. Now to find the probability of A given B, we say it equals to probability of A intersection B dividing by probability of B. This is the rule for conditional probability. Here we have event A and event B. Event A is the sum is seven, and event B is the first die is greater than the second one. First, let's find the intersection of them. A intersection B equals, so the intersection of these two, these two, this one, 
and this one. The intersection of these two, you have only three elements. Six and, six and one, five and two, and four and three. Four and three, okay? So the intersection of them, A, in, A intersection B, let me write down above, A intersection B is six and one, five and two. On three. This is intersection B. So what's the probability of an intersection B? In a intersection, we have only three elements. We divide by the total of uh, outcomes. Three divided by 36. So probability of an intersection B is three over 36. And probability of B is 15 over 36. Because here we have 15 elements in event B. Which is, yeah, we say probability A given B is probability A intersection B divided by probability of B. It's three over 36, because in A intersection B, you have only three elements. And in B, we have 15 elements. 15 over 36 is the probability of B. Probability of anything, an event, is the members in the event dividing by the total outcomes. Okay? Here, yeah, we simplify this, we get one over five. From this, these two 36 are cancel out, we get three over 15. So three over 15 and equals to one over five. We divide both sides by both above and down by three, we get one over five. Okay. Do you, do you have any question? It's only applying the rule of conditional probability, nothing else. We have on the example, it says, whether records show <clears throat> that, whether records show that the probability of high barometric pressure is 0.85. as the probability of high barometric pressure. And the probability of rain and high barometric pressure is 0.15. The probability of rain and high barometric pressure is 15. It says, what's the probability of rain given high barometric pressure? Here, this is conditional probability. It's rain given that high barometric pressure, okay? Here, we let <clears throat> H to denote the rain, okay? And T denote high barometric pressure. And here, we say probability of H given that T, H here is rain and T is high barometric pressure. It equals to probability of H intersection T dividing by probability of T. We have given both probabilities. The above one is 0 0.15, it's given. It says the probability of rain and high barometric pressure is 0 0.15. And the probability of high barometric is 0 0.85. We just divide them. It's 0 0.15 dividing by 0.85, which is 0.1765. This is the probability of <clears throat> rain given high barometric pressure. It's so easy. If we just apply the uh, rule of conditional probability. Now we have the chain rule for conditional probability. The chain rule here, it is converted to PDF. These are intersections becomes that, that symbol. These are intersections.
these are intersections. Sorry? Okay, I'm going to. These are, we say, the, the condition of uh, the chain rule for conditional probability is that the chain rule for conditional probability with n events. That's given by this rule. We say probability of A intersection, A1, inter, if we have A n events, if we have n events, A1, A2, A3, up to A n. These all are events. We say the probability of A1 intersection A2, intersection up to A n. If we have, let's say, three events, the probability of uh, event one, intersection event two, intersection event three, it equals to probability of event one multiplying by conditional probability of A2 given A1, A2 given A1, okay, times probability of A3 given A2 and A1. That means if A1 and A2 is happen, then A3 is happen. Then up to N, yeah, it's one. It should be one. This index is one. Okay. Then we multiply these all. First probability of A1 multiplying by the conditional probability of A2 given A1. Then conditional probability of A3 given A2 and A1. Then uh, probability of uh, A4 given A3, A2, A1. And so we apply this rule for finding it. Here for this example, we apply the above rule. It says, Mr. Basir needs two students to help him with a science demonstration for his class of 18 girls. In the class, we have 18 girls and 12 boys. So the total of students in the class is 30, okay? He randomly choose one student who comes to the front of the room. He then chooses a second, the second student. First, he choose one of the students and the student comes to the front of the class. Then he choose another student. That means the, the first event, choosing the first student, okay? And the second one is choosing, uh, the second one choosing, is choosing the second student. He then chooses the second student from those still seated. What's the probability that both students chosen are girl? We have two events. The first one is choosing the first girl. And the second event is choosing the second girl. Okay, we let the probability of both are girl, girl one and girl two. We say it is probability of girl one and probability of girl two given girl one. Okay, <clears throat> we apply the above rule as you see here. If we have only two events, as for only two events, we say probability of A inter A1 intersection A2 equals probability of A1 times probability of A2 given A1. So what if it is uh, three events? Let's say if it's three, probability of A1 intersection A2 intersection A3 equals to probability of A1 times probability of A2 given A1 times probability of A3 given A1 and A2. But here in the in this example, we have only two events. So we have only probability A1 intersection A2. That means both should be yelled here. It says A1 is choosing the first girl. And A2 is choosing the second girl. Okay. It is probability of girl one and girl two. It's probability of girl one. And 
its multiplication. Probability of gel two given gel one. Okay. We say probability of gel one. For the first one, <coughs> Mr. Basir <coughs> chooses the first gel from 18 gel. Okay. And in the class, we have 30 students. That means in the class, we have 18 girls and 30 students. Okay. So the probability of choosing one girl is the total number of girls dividing by the total number of students in the class. Okay. In the class, we have 18 girls and 30 students. Okay. It is 18 dividing by 30. So choosing the first girl, probability of girl one is 18 dividing by 30. This is done, okay? And in the example, it says that <clears throat> that student which choose comes to the front of the class, okay? So what's the remaining? students we have look here we choose a girl so it becomes 17 and the total number of students become 29 now for the second one for b for choosing the second girl we take it among 17 girls and 29 students we have 29 students in the class it's with, with our turning it that's so without returning the first student. A 17 over 29. So for the second one is 17 over 29. As you see here, it's 18 over 30 multiplying by 17 over 29. 17 over 29. <clears throat> so now we just multiply these two, we get 306 divided by 870, which is 41 over 145. This is multiplication. Okay. That's all. As you see here, the, the first student or the first girl was choose is among 18, 18 girls. And in the class, we have 30 students, which is 18 dividing by 30. Then for the second one, for the second one, let's choose among 17 students because 17 girls, because one girl is choosed, okay? Among 17, <clears throat> among 17 girls, and we have 29 students in the class because one of the students is choosed. So it's 17 over 29. We just multiply these, so we get those. That's 51 over 145. This is the probability that both students would choose our girl. Be careful with the probability. It must always be between zero and one. Okay? It must always be between zero and one. It's possible to be zero or one, but not possible to be less than zero and go to down. Okay? So that's 51. Of 145. If you see the word probability in the question, the probability, if you see this word, so it must be from zero to one. Okay. We have on the example. Let me use this. This intersection. Here we have three events. These are intersections when it's converted to PDF. The intersection becomes this. These are intersections. Okay. It says in a factory, <clears throat> there are a hundred units of certain products. Five 
which are defective. Among 100 products, five of them are defective. We pick three units from the 100 units random in random. Okay, we just pick three of them. So what's the probability that none of them are defective? What's the probability that none of them are defective? Look, we have 100 products, okay? Five of them defective. And what's the rest? The rest is 95. 95 non-defect. Okay, and the total is 100. So what's the, what's the probability that choose, choosing three products such that none of them are defective? None of them are defective. We have only five defective products and 95 non defective products. Yeah, when we choose the first one, we choose it among 95 non defective. We want it to be non defective. Okay. So, what's the probability that choosing three products, products such that none of them are defective? That means none of them are among the, that five uh, defective products. When we choose the first one, probability of A1 equals probability, probability of A1 equals 95 of 100. Why? Because we have 95 non defective. And the total of products is 100 which is 95 over 100. We choose this one. Then we choose the second one. I said probability of A2 equals, sorry, A2 given A1. A2 given A1 equals, it's equals to what? Here, it says probability A2 given A1. A2 given A1, that means probability of A2 when A1 is done. After doing the first one, then we do the second. That means it equals to. After doing the first one, so we choose a non-defective one. That means the number of non-defective products become 94, is it? it becomes 94 because we choose one of them. And the total number of products become 99. Now, the probability of A2 given that A1 is 94 dividing by 99. Okay? The th for the third one, we say probability of A3 given that A1 and A2 means probability of three, when the first two event, the first uh, events is done. I mean, after choosing the first and the second one, then we do the third one. Look, for the second one, we choose another non-defective. So this becomes 93 and the total number becomes 98. So now for the third one, we have 93 dividing by 98. And the probability of choosing three non defective is probability A1 multiplying by probability of A2 given A1 multiplying by probability of A3 given A1 and A2. That's probability of A1. We found this. It is 95 of 100. Probability of A2 given A1 is 94 over 99. Probability of A3 given A2, A1. That's 93 over 98. We just multiply these three, we get the result. That's it. That's given. Here, yeah, this probability of A1, this probability of A2 given A1, and this probability of A3 given A1 and A2.
And the result is 95 over 100 multiplying by 94 over 99 multiplying by 93 over 98, which is 0 0.856. Okay, this is 0 0.8560. This is the probability that choosing three products such that none of them are defective. Do you have any questions? This is similar <clears throat> example to the above one. It says in a shipment of 20 computers, three are defective. Here we have 20 computers, three defective. So what's the rest of non-defective ones? 17, 17 are non-defective. It says three computers are randomly selected and tested. <clears throat> What's the probability that uh, all three are defective? That means all three are from the defective ones. We have only three defective computers. So probability, here we have three events, A1, A2, and A3. And you should find probability of A1 and probability of, <clears throat> to find this, we say we apply the rule probability of <clears throat> A1 intersection, A2 intersection, A3 equals probability of A1 multiplying by probability of A1 given A2 multiplying by probability of A3 given A1, A2. Okay, so here we must find these three. We must find probability of A1, probability of A1 given A2. I mean, it means probability of A1 given A2 means uh, finding the probability of A2 after finding the probability of A2, after choosing the first one. And then for the third one, after choosing the first and second one, we do the third one. It's the same as the above one. So the probability of A1 is three over 20. And after doing the first one, after choosing the first computer, how many defectives do you have? We have two. So the total is 90. That means probability of A2 given A1 equals two over 19. We have only two defective ones. It's choosing a defective one, dividing by the total number. Then probability of a3 given A1, A2 equals, for the third step here, in the second step, we choose another, another defective one. So we have only one defective one and the total is 18. So one over 18, we multiply these three, as we have written down the rule here, we get the result which is one over 1140. It's one over 1140. So this is the property that all three choose computers are defective. We have three defective and 17 non-defective ones. So the probability that of choosing three defective computers is one over uh, 1140. Do you have any question? Okay, let's take a break. It will be continue after that. We now have for representing conditional probabilities with three diagram. <clears throat> Here in this example, we use three diagram for finding the uh, conditional probability. In the example, it says, in my town, it's rainy one third of the days. That means in each three days, one of them is rainy. One of the three days uh, is rainy. That means one third of the days is rainy. That means so uh, the probability of rain, of rain is one third. 
So the probability of no training is two thirds, is it? So the sum of them must be one. The probability of any event with its complement must be one. Okay. Here it says the probability of rainy is one third. So the probability of not rainy is two thirds. As you see here, we say the probability of rainy we, we let R, we let R to the event of rainy. That means the probability of rainy is one third. And the probability of no training, which are complement, is two thirds. Okay, I'm going to do it step by step. And then, <clears throat> given that it's rainy, that means if it's rainy, there will be heavy traffic with the probability of a uh half. -huh with the probability of R. That means if it's rainy, this part, this one is rainy. This one is rainy. So if it's rainy, the probability of a heavy traffic, the probability of heavy traffic with rainy is a half. That means here we let T to be the event of heavy traffic. That means if it's rainy, we have two parts for rainy. It's either heavy traffic or not heavy traffic. Okay, it's either heavy traffic or not heavy traffic. And for heavy traffic, it's a half. And for not heavy traffic, as you see, I've, it's written down here, T complement. T is used for heavy traffic. If it's heavy traffic, if it's rainy, look. From here, it's rainy. It's not rainy. Okay. For rainy, it says, if it's rainy, then it's heavy traffic at a half. That means the probability of heavy traffic, that means RT is a half. And RT complement, that means if it's rainy and not heavy traffic, is also a half. It's also a half. That means for rainy, if it's heavy traffic, it's a half. If it's not heavy traffic, it's still a half. Then, And given that it's not rainy, that means here we work on this part. It's not rainy. There will be heavy traffic with the probability one fourth. That means the probability of heavy traffic if it's not rainy is one fourth. Even for here, we have two parts. For not rainy, for not rainy, it's either heavy traffic or not heavy traffic. It says the probability of being heavy traffic is one fourth. So what's the probability of not heavy traffic? It must be three fourths because the sum of them must be one. Okay, it's one fourth. What it should be, it should be three fourth to get one by these two. It's one fourth plus three fourth is one. So if it's, not, if it's not rainy and it is heavy traffic, the probability is one fourth. And the probability of not rainy, but, and also not heavy traffic is three fourths. Then, if it is rainy, and there is heavy traffic. If it's rainy and there is heavy traffic, as you see here, if it's rainy and heavy traffic, yeah, it becomes two, pay, two parts. I get late to work or not late to work. That's written down. I arrive late for work. 
with probability a half. That means the probability of getting late if it's rainy and heavy traffic. Second, yeah, yeah. Am I done now, but rainy? Am I not rainy? Rainy, I can't do what she do, but she live. Cat, heavy traffic bit, cat, heavy traffic bit. Basha, Bahamasho, not rainy, I cash. I like cat, heavy traffic bit, I guess a chuad. I get heavy traffic, never say it's a chuad. Whatever it could have got it. Enja. Ale, I get rainy bit, what up? Rainy. Heavy traffic bit, little. Not little. Whatever I may have traffic near. Rainy heavy traffic, chia. I'm a set of rainy. Heavy traffic, yes, in bed. Ale. I get a guest in him, but. Said Isha come like at the Hoya, I guess. Basha. Brain blade. Do a coat in them. I get it. Do a coat in them. You get a cell phone. I get it. Do an account in a bit. I bet. I be a mission. The cell to be bo. The very cool to get a cat here. Okay. I will tell you a gift. Jobs and chicken. So on the other hand, the probability of being late is reduced to one eighth if it's not raining and. There is no heavy traffic. Look, if it's not rainy, it's not rainy. And there is no heavy traffic. Being late, its probability is one eight. Kawata, I get Baran Nebetu, traffic is Nebe, heavy traffic Nebet. I get it to a cotini, I guess at Hashta. I get it to an accounting channel. Okay, this is seven of eight. So the probability of uh, not being late is seven of eight. In other situations, it's rainy and no traffic. And also it's not rainy and traffic. Rainy, rainy, no traffic, and not rainy and traffic. Rainy, no traffic, not rainy and traffic. As says, the probability of being late is 0 0.25. 0 0.25. Yeah, the, pro the probability of being late is 0 0.25. It's one over four. The probability of not being late is 3 over 4. The probability of being late here is 1 over 4. The probability of not being late is 3 over 4. That's all the three. Now, here, so what's the probability of being rainy, not uh, rainy, not heavy traffic, and being late, I'm gonna go through the line. Look, rainy, not being traffic, and late. That means you multiply one third by a half by one fourth. That's all. We just multiply those numbers. Just go through the way, okay? So what's the probability of not rainy, or not rainy, and heavy traffic, and also being late? Look, this is not rainy. This is heavy traffic. And this is being late. This is two over three, multiplying by one fourth, multiplying by one fourth. That's all. Okay. And let's see the questions in the example. It says, if you pick a day in random, what's the probability that it's not raining? Not raining. Look, not raining here. If there is heavy traffic. 
heavy traffic is this. Because you, we put T for heavy traffic and T completely for not heavy traffic, okay? Then I'm not late, not late. This is late, but for not late is this one. We just multiply two thirds by one four by three or four. That's all. Okay. This is the result, which is one over eight. That's one over eight. One, two thirds multiplied by one fourth multiplied by three or four. Let me change these. These are intersections. Is there any more? These are intersections. Okay, <clears throat> now, how about the second question? It says, what's the probability that I am late? I'm late, let's see in how many times it's late. This is late, this is late, this is late, this is late also, okay? In four, in these four cases we have late. So from this date, it could be heavy rain. And this heavy rain, it could be rainy. From this part, it's one fourth here to be late. And it could be not heavy rain and also rainy. It could be heavy rain, it could be not rainy. It could be not heavy rain and rainy. So you have these four cases. We multiply these all, these all, these all, and these also. Oh, sorry, it's the above one. We multiply these numbers. That means here we have we have four cases. We multiply numbers at each case. For the first case, for the first case, we multiply. We multiply one third by a half, multiplying by a half, which is one over 12. Then in the second one, in the second case, we multiply one third by a half, multiplying by one fourth, which is one over 24. In the third case, we have two over three, multiplying by one fourth, multiplying by one fourth, which is one over 24. Then, we multiply two thirds by three over four. Then multiply by one eighth, which is one over 16. We just add these four numbers. We just add the probability of all cases. Probability of the first case is one over 12. In, in the second is one over 24. In the third one is one over 24. And the fourth one is one over 16. We just add these three numbers, these four numbers, sorry. That's it, one over 12, one over 24, 24 over 16, which is 11 over 48. So the probability that not late is 11 over 48. The third one, it says, <clears throat> given that, as you see here, it's conditional probability. It's conditional probability. Given that, since we have given that, if you see the word given that, means that's pro uh, conditional probability. Given that I arrive <clears throat> late at work, what's the probability that it's rained that day? It's rained that day. So it's given that I arrive late at work, so what's the probability that it's rained at that day? Let's see. We need to find probability RL. R is rainy and L is late, R given that late, okay? Rainy given that 
late. So the probability of R L equals probability of R intersection L dividing by probability of L. This is the conditional probability rule. So the probability of R intersection L, R and L, let's see. In how many cases we have R and L means rainy and late. Look, if it's rainy and late, if it's rainy and late. We have these two. If it's rainy from this line, we can get it, okay? And from here, we can get this. That means the probability of R intersection L is the sum of these two. One third times, of one over two times one over two, which one over two. And here one third times one over two times one over four, which one over 24. The sum of these two is the probability of a R intersection L, which is rainy and late. That's. And the probability of late, we found it before, it's 11 over 48. We just divide these two, we get the result of six over eight. Here, we just apply the conditional probability rule. We find the probability of rain and lake at their intersection, I mean. Then we found uh, the probability of lake before was 11 over 48. We just divide these two, we get six over 11, which is the probability of uh sorry the probability of uh rain given that i arrive late at work this is conditional probability do you have any question about that uh, the most important thing is creating the table Hitting the tree. You can do it step by step as I did. It's easy to create the tree or construct the tree from the given data. These are intersections. Why these all are changed? I don't know. Okay, we have a law of total probability. So if B1 and B2 are two disjoint events, that means their intersection is an empty set. They are two disjoint uh, events. Such that probability of B1 plus probability of B2 is one. That means the union of event A and sorry, even A1, B1, and even B2 as the sample space. For example, in rolling a dice, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. We let B1 to be the odd ones, one, three, five, and B2 to be the even ones, two, four, and six. It says, the intersection of B1 and B2 is an empty set. That means there is no common between B1 and B2 between these two events. And their intersection, I mean, their intersection is an empty set. And their union is the sample space. The union of B1 and B2 is there. That means the probability of B1 plus probability of B2 is one. We say, for any event E, for any event E, we say the probability of E is probability of E intersection B1 plus probability of E intersection B2. That's all. As probability of E intersection B1, event one, if we, if we pick any event, we find the intersection of this event with both previous events, which are B1 and B2. Then we find the, the probabilities. They say it is probability of E intersection B1 plus probability of E intersection B2, which equals to probability of E given B1 times probability B1. That is probability of E given B1 times probability B1. 
plus probability E given B2 times probability of B2. We apply this rule for finding the probability of E. This is the general form. This is the, if we have more than, let's say, two probabilities, that's the general form, okay? Here, we now, we take some examples about this. It's so easy, only applying the rules. Probabilities are so easy. It's only applying the rules, just try to memorize the rules, that's all, nothing else. And you should know which one do you use at that case, at the given case, I mean. Here, we have an example that says pediatric, uh, pediatric department researcher examines the medical records of toddlers that came to a particular pediatric clinic. He found that 20%, 20% of the toddlers came for flu treatment. Yeah, 20% of the toddlers came for uh, flu treatment. And 10%, 10% of mothers of the toddlers that having flu are also having flu. 10% of the mothers, 10% of those mothers, let's say a day, how they can come now, like any flu there, push a flu. Okay? And also 30% of the mothers that came to the clinic are found having flu. 30% of the total mothers, which are in the clinic, have uh, flu. It says, what's the probability of the toddler having flu, given that the mother having flu? What's the probability of the toddler having flu, given that the mother having flu? This. We let T to be the event of toddler having flu, and M, event of mother having flu. So the probability of T, it's given above, as 20%. It says 20% of the toddlers having flu and 10% of the mothers having flu. That means here, yeah, probability of M, sorry, probability of T, which is the toddlers having flu, is 0.2, 0.2. And here, we should find the probability of M intersection T. We have it's given that also. And probability of mothers having flu and the total having flu is 10%. It's given above. It, it says 10% of those, those mothers of the total that having flu are also having flu. That means the probability of mother having flu and uh, toddler having flu is 10%. So it's 0.1. And probability of mothers having flu is 0.3. It's the total number of uh, mothers in the clinic. It says 30% of the mothers that came uh, to the clinic having flu is 30%. Now, to find the probability of toddlers having flu, given that mother having flu is probability of T intersection M dividing by probability of M. So what's the probability of uh, T intersection M? That's given, which is 0.1. Then the probability of mothers having flu Mother having flu in the clinic is 0.3, which is 30%. This is the probability of mother having flu and toddler having flu, which is 0.1. And the probability of 
mother having flow is 0.3. We say it's 0.1 dividing by 0 0.3, which is 0 0.33. This is the probability of mother having flow. So it was having flow, given that mother having flow. Given that mother having flu. Yeah, we apply the conditional probability. And here we have the second question about the example. I'm going to upload this version of the lecture notes for you on the e-learning, okay? The second question is says, <clears throat> what's the probability of the toddler having flu? The probability of toddler having flu, given that the mother is not having flu, the mother is not having flu. We have given that the mother having flu is 0.3. So what's the probability that the mother uh, not, is not having flu is 0.7. You see, according to the law of total probability, you say probability of total having flu is probability of total intersection mother. I mean total having flu and mother having flu plus probability of Total having flu, intersection, mother not having flu. Mother not having flu. Here, probability of mother having flu plus probability of mother not having flu is one. Because we said probability of any event with the probability of its, its complement is one. Here, mother having flu and mothers have no flu. That means here these two are complement to each other. So the probability of these two is one, must be one. This is something here, probability of mother having flu plus probability of mother not having flu is, is one. If it's given that probability of mother having flu, it is 0 0.3. So how about probability of mother have no flu? Say probability of M complement is 0 0.7, is it? It's 0 0.3. How about this one? We just move this to the other side. We get one minus 0 0.3 which is 0 0.7. That means the probability of mother have no flu is 0 0.7. And this intersection. Here, for this one, for this rule, we have given that probability of total having flu is 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And the probability of total having flu and mother having flu is 0.1. We have given these two. So from these two, we can find probability of total having flu. Total having flu. Why do we use these rules? As you see, we are asked to find the probability of uh, total having flu, given that mother have no flu, that means M complement, it equals to probability of T intersection M complement dividing by probability of M complement. We, we must find these two, probability of T intersection M complement dividing by probability of M complement. Uh, from the Law of total probability, we say probability of total having flu is probability of total having flu and mother having flu. And probability of total having flu and mother have no flu. That's it. We have given these two, this and this one. It's 0 0.2 and 0 0.1. We can get this, one, which is 0 0.1. So probability of total having flu and mother have no flu is 0 0.2 minus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.2. This is 0.1. Our probability of mother have no flu is 0.7. As I explained before. So you have these two, we just divide 0.1 by 0.7 because this is the intersection one. It's probability of 
T intersection M complement is 0.1. And a probability of M complement is 0.7. We just divide these two, we get the results of 0.1. This is the result. Here, we just applied the rule of total probability for finding the, prob the probability of total having flu and mother have no flu. Then we find the probability of mother have no flu because the probability of mother have flu is 0.3. So one minus 0.3 is 0.7, which is the probability of mother have no flu. Now we have the probability of, we have the probability of total having flu and mother have no flu. And also we have probability of mother have no flu. We divide these two, we get the results. The above one is 0.1 and the below one is 0.7. What's 0.143? This is the result for this example. That's enough for today.